I always say the transfer portal giveth and the transfer portal taketh away. And now that we are currently in the spring transfer portal period, we are learning that lesson as college football and specifically as LSU fans. There's been some taken away that the transfer portal has done over the past couple of days. But what do those former LSU Tigers that have entered the transfer portal all have in common? You are Locked On LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's up, y'all? Welcome into Locked On LSU. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, meaning your preferred podcast platform, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Apple Music, whatever it might be. You can also check us out on YouTube as well. So like, comment, rate, review, subscribe, all of that great stuff. I always appreciate interacting with y'all on the podcast and always appreciate you making Locked On LSU your first listen every Every single day. So the transfer portal is open for another week or so, give or take. And there's been even more action, both on players that LSU has been high on in getting through the transfer portal and also LSU players that have entered the transfer portal. So before we get into that, I got to let y'all know that today's edition of Locked on LSU is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. So that's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Terms and conditions apply. All right, let's get into it. A few more uh, transfer portal exits from LSU's roster since the last time that we talked. A little bit of a refresh, if you haven't heard. Now six total players from LSU's rosters that, that has entered the transfer portal. The first name that we learned of before the, the transfer portal even opened in this second transfer portal window was Jackson Howard, a redshirt freshman redshirted this past year. is a five-star edge rusher with a number one player out of the state of Minnesota in the 2023 class. And edge rusher Jackson Howard has entered the transfer portal. Kai Prian, a wide receiver. Four-star in the 2023 class, he has also entered the transfer portal. But really, ever since Kai Pran entered his name to the transfer portal, he's had that do not contact label next to his name. And that usually 99.9% .9 of the time means that they know where they're going. Like, look, prospective coaches, no need to pick up the phone and give me a call because I pretty much already know where I want to go. All signs point toward Tulane. Kai Prian has taken several visits to Tulane. It's, you know, you get to stay in state. He's a Louisiana kid. So if by the time you're listening to this, he already has committed to Tulane. At time of recording, he has not yet, but all signs point toward that's where he's going to be. And he'll be playing for the Green Wave in the fall. The third player that entered the transfer portal is tight end Connor Gilbreth and then uh, DB Ryan Robinson Jr. But since then, since the last time we talked, Two more players from LSU's roster have entered the transfer portal. These, I think, are a little bit more impactful, maybe a little bit more concerning. The first and foremost, it's uh, Ryan Yates, DB, specifically a safety, a three-star in the 2023 class out of Denton, Texas. Ryan Yates played 13 games for LSU this past season. Now, I would say that was probably due to more necessity than anything that you and I both know very well. Unfortunately, uh, this team was strapped for, DD, for DB depth this past season. There were young players and experienced players that were forced to play a lot more than I would probably guess uh, Brian Kelly would want them to play. Uh, JV and Toviato, Ashton Stamps joining that group as well, but he had so many injuries at defensive back, more specifically the cornerback position that these young players were just forced to play. So Ryan Yates, a young player that has that had a decent bit of experience for you this past season, he's entered the transfer portal. And then the second player that has entered over, or entered over the weekend was a linebacker, Christian Brathwaite. He's a four-star in the 2023 class as well. Another Texas kid, uh, Christian Brathwaite coming out of Cypress, Texas. He redshirted this past season. We saw him in five games. He had two tackles against Auburn, a tackle against Missouri, where he got his first work. So we got to see, you know, some, some solid work in SEC play. But Christian Brathwaite has entered the transfer portal. Now, 
one thing, if you're analyzing all players that have entered the transfer portal so far, four out of the six of them, over half of the players that have entered the transfer portal and intend to leave LSU's roster, they're defensive players. Edge rusher in Jackson Howard, a defensive back in Ryan Robinson and Ryan Yates, another linebacker from Christian Brathwaite. I don't think that it's a coincidence that you completely overhauled your defensive coaching staff, and now you're seeing players on the defensive side of the ball enter the transfer portal. It's probably because of a handful of reasons. One, they might not fit this system very well. Two, it might be these players are looking at their situations and like, look, I committed to play for one coaching staff. I don't want to play for another coaching staff. I want to go where I, with the coaching staff where I've been recruited. That's a very common sentiment with players that have entered the transfer portal, especially when there's a coaching overhaul. I know it's not a head coaching overhaul, but you got a new coordinator. You got a new position coach. Like that's that's a lot of change and they just might not fit. They just might not vibe. Another thing that almost all of these players have in common is that they aren't expected to be starters right away. There might not be a clear path to the field nor a clear path to starting nonetheless because there's players in front of them that are more experienced, that have been in the fold longer, that have waited their turns, and now it's their opportunity. Frankly, a, a second-year player who redshirted this past year, I'm looking at a guy like a, like a Christian Brathwaite or a Jackson Howard, they're not going to get the first nod when there are other players that have more experience than they do. Now, the one that I think hurts probably the, the worst, that probably hits the deepest, that's Ryan Yates. It's a guy that saw more work this past season than any other player that has entered the transfer portal. It's tough because he's, he's gotten experience. And also because he plays a position that's already thin for LSU. You don't want to see any DB talent walk out the door. But you also added a safety in the transfer portal in this past uh, this past transfer portal window in Jordan Gilbert. Jordan Gilbert, who started for a couple of years at Texas A&M, now coming into LSU, he gets the nod more likely than not at one of the starting safety positions over Orion Yates. So I can see those pieces being fit together that, look, you might not have an opportunity to play and you have a new coaching staff, staff which is kind of the cherry on top of it all, uh, you know, at least as far as the defensive players are concerned. I've seen a couple sentiments on Twitter that Brian Kelly has lost the locker room. Um, I think that's ridiculous, <laughs> frankly. I think that is dramatic and ridiculous and none of these players – to me, it gives me zero indication that Brian Kelly has lost the locker room. You have lost depth pieces. You have lost players that weren't going to be foundational pieces for you this upcoming season. So why is that any indication that Brian Kelly has lost the locker room? I get it. I understand that any player, when they decide to leave, when they say, look, this place isn't for me, instantly our minds might go to a bad place. Like, uh, there's something wrong with LSU. They don't, you know, it's LSU's problem. No, actually, maybe it's just this player feels like they're better suited elsewhere. And there's just not a place for them. Even sometimes I think it can be a positive indication that, look, you got so much depth and you got, you know, you got so many players ahead of these players that are going to get more of an opportunity that there's just no place for you. And let's be, let's be honest, you needed to create scholarship space to add to positions that are maybe more of dire need, like defensive tackle, maybe offensive line depth. Now you are afforded the ability to do that because six scholarships just opened up. And by my calculation, LSU is now at 82 scholarship players. Again, the NCAA threshold um, to be compliant for scholarships is 85. So now you got some wiggle room. Now you got some opportunities to bring some D tackles in or to add some depth to other positions, even starters at other positions. So it's always, it's always kind of sucks to see depth leave, especially Jackson Howard, a player that was as highly recruited as he was in the 2023 cycle. But right now you're looking for starters and you cannot afford to have depth pieces on the roster taking up scholarship space when you look when you are looking for starters in the spring transfer portal window. Unfortunately, some of those uh, some of those compromises have to be made. But speaking of defensive tackles, some updates on the transfer portal window of players that LSU is targeting, maybe some players that are now 
you know, no longer in consideration. We'll get into that coming up next after just a few words from our sponsors. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. So that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn is not just any other job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, then you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within only 24 hours. So you don't have to be waiting weeks and even months and having to overcompensate for that role that needs filling. No, you can hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, rolling along here, Locked On LSU. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can find us on YouTube as well. Just search Locked On LSU in the search bar and hit that subscribe button. And then you'll get notifications as soon as new episodes of the podcast drop. And the Locked On NFL Mock Draft is available right now. I can't believe we're only a few days away from the mock from a mock draft from the NFL draft. We'll have some NFL draft coverage coming up over the next couple of days. We're talking Jaden Daniels, talking Malik Neighbors, talking Brian Thomas Jr., Makai Wingo, Mason Smith, so on and so forth. So stay tuned for that content coming up here in the next couple of days on Locked On LSU. But in the meantime, find the ultimate six episode series on Locked On NFL Draft to hear who the local locked on experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft is available right now on Locked On NFL Draft on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. So we know uh, defensive tackle is the number one need for LSU in the offseason. Not only do we just know that because you lose Makai Wingo and Mason Smith to the NFL Draft, like I just mentioned, but also because Brian Kelly told you. After the spring game, he got up at the podium and said, yeah, we are focusing in on defensive tackle and pretty much defensive tackle exclusively in the transfer portal. Now, some good news and bad news on that front. Let's just go ahead and start with the bad news. Uh, One name that we have broken down on the podcast, we did last week, so you can find that on your preferred podcast platform. One target that not just LSU had been targeting in the transfer portal, but pretty much any defensive tackle needy team across college football was pursuing Philip Levy. Philip Leedy, a defensive tackle out of Indiana, 6'3", 295. He was recruited by Colorado, Auburn, Missouri, Texas Tech, Washington, Oklahoma, so on and so forth. And he spent his first few years of his career at Texas Tech, spent this past season at Indiana, uh, started 11 games, played in all 12 of them, was a consistent starter for Texas Tech and then uh, and then for Indiana throughout the entirety of his career. Philip Bleedy was one of those that LSU was pursuing heavily. That really would have felt like a slam dunk of a a spring transfer portal addition because you're getting a certified starter that has a lot of Power 5 starting experience. News came out on Sunday, Philip Bleedy has committed to Auburn. So that one kind of stings a little bit because not only is it a player that you were pursuing, not only was it a player that you were pursuing at a dire position of need, and not only are you missing out on that player that was at a dire position of need, but it's going to, and I know I know that SEC West and SEC East doesn't exist anymore, but it still kind of does in my mind. It just still feels like it. You're losing him to an SEC West rival. So Philip Lady, one defensive tackle target that is now off the board. Let's transition into some positive news. Simeon Barrow, who's a defensive tackle from Michigan State, he was uh, he's on campus today, on Monday. If you're listening to this on Tuesday, this is recorded on Monday. Uh, Simeon Barrow is on campus today for an official visit. The other good side of that is, to my knowledge, of all of the research that I have done and the people that I have talked to, Simeon Barrow has no other visits scheduled as of right now. 
Now that can change in the next five minutes. Like that can change in the next day or a couple of days. That can change after his visit at LSU. If he comes to LSU and is like, yeah, you know, this just ain't it. This isn't for me. Let's go ahead and, and set up some visits here over the next couple of days. Reminder that even though the transfer portal closes on April 30th, these players can still continue to take visits and can still uh, commit after April 30th throughout spring practice. And of course they want to get committed and get settled and, you know, start with the strength program and start practicing once uh, fall camp starts. But overall, like if Simeon Barrow wants to take this process into May, he absolutely can, but you need defensive tackles now. Like you need to address that position, but not just depth, but with starters right now. So Simeon Barrow taking that visit today against Simeon Barrow is uh, the defensive tackle out of Michigan state. And like I mentioned in the last segment, you now have space. You are now are afforded space on your roster and you have scholarship spots that you can uh, you can add more than just one player. I said it is a non-negotiable to just go out and get one starting caliber D tackle, but I'll take two. I'll take a starting caliber D tackle and another guy who might just be depth. I'll take some defensive tackle competition in fall camp. Why wouldn't you? Because this, this team needs to be beefed up in the trenches. And I don't think that you're in a position right now where you can only just take one. If you have the roster space available, if you have the scholarship space available, then go ahead and do it. Maybe even look beyond defensive tackle. Maybe you're looking for some offensive line depth. Maybe you want to add a running back just to supplement this position room. Let's say if things with Trey Holly's legal proceedings don't work out in his his or your favor. That's there's a likelihood of that. So I think now you at least have some wiggle room and you have the space to address positions beyond D tackle or address D tackle in a bigger way than you initially anticipated that you or you initially anticipated or initially planned. So Philip Levy heading to Auburn but Simeon Barrow on campus today for an official visit. But coming up next, yet another national championship for the purple and gold. And man, oh man, does it not ever get old talking about that, even though we've been able to talk about it a decent bit over the past calendar year. Let's get into that coming up next. LSU Gymnastics wins their very first national championship in program history. We'll break it all down coming up next after just a few words from our sponsors. All right, I want to tell you about FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL and baseball is in full swing and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. So bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and oh so easy to use. So if you're looking for something to bet on, in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I live in Nashville. I do sports talk radio in Nashville. I cover the Nashville Predators. The Nashville Predators are playing the Vancouver Canucks in game two on Tuesday. And I like Philip Forsberg, anytime goal scorer. He, uh, he broke a franchise record for number of goals scored in a single season this past season. Didn't have a great game in game one, but I expect a big time bounce back for the frontline center coming up on Tuesday. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. Make that first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, rolling along here, locked on LSU. Thanks again for making us your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And LSU Gymnastics wins its first ever national championship in program history, despite getting to the dance 10 times in program history, getting to the final four, the you know, uh, getting to the national championship and just falling short whether it was national runner-up like we experienced last year in 2019 when Darren Ravel got all hot and bothered about, you know, a billboard going up about coming in second place. Um, LSU's been there 10 times before, but just hasn't been able to close the deal, hasn't been able to bring that trophy back to Baton Rouge. But this year, this year was different. LSU wins it with a final score of 198 to 225 ahead of Cal who came in second and then Utah and Florida rounding out the top four. 
this team has felt special from the beginning. And I think that 2019 team had a very similar feeling to it as well, that it kind of felt like you had such special gymnasts and athletes, whether it was Sarah Finnegan, who I guess, you know, a little bit of deja vu all over again with her little sister, Aaliyah, being able to bring home the trophy this season. And it was McKenna Kelly. Like that season as a whole just felt special. It felt like it had the makings of being a national championship season. But again, like I mentioned, they fell short that season. They just ran into really good teams, like whether it's Oklahoma or Utah or, you know, these, these, you know, frequent flyers, so to speak, of these teams and these programs that just consistently just edged LSU out just a little bit better that day. That team felt special, and this team has felt special all season long, battling back after last season, not just getting back into the dance, but being able to close it. With athletes like Haley Bryant, who I think will go down in history as one of the LSU gymnastics greats, because why wouldn't she? Because she is one of the most, if not the most decorated gymnast in LSU history. You're all around national championship, national champion this past season. Haley Bryant was special. Aaliyah Finnegan was special. When she needed a big performance on beam, LSU closed out the day on beam, started on floor, closed out on beam. When she knew what she had to do, on beam to secure and solidify that national championship. And she delivered one of the most beautiful beam routines that I have ever seen her do. When the pressure is insurmountable, when you know it all falls on you and it all falls on you in an event that is widely regarded as the most difficult and stressful event in gymnastics on beam, when she had the stress of the world on her shoulders, when she had the stress of a potential national championship on her shoulders, and she she delivered a performance like that, it was flawless. And it's really, if you haven't watched it, I would highly recommend you go back and watch and listen to Allie Raisman's breakdown of Aaliyah Finnegan's beam routine because it was it was beautiful. And it's made even more interesting by Allie Raisman's breakdown. Aaliyah Finnegan uh, finishes with a 995 on beam. The team as a whole finished on beam 497625. That is the highest team score ever recorded on beam in the history of NCAA gymnastics. So obviously you know, a program record, but also an NCAA record as well. The other thing that I think should be really encouraging as LSU gymnastics fans is not only do you have, you know, this special feeling of Haley Bryant, you know, who will go down as I believe an LSU legend, uh, Kai Johnson, another senior on this team as well, but you also had a lot of freshman presence, whether it was a Connor McLean who came up big on being with a 99625 or whether it's an Amari Drayton who came up with a 99125 on floor when they needed it. I mean, these freshmen that were big parts of this team will now carry that with them. Because, yes, absolutely, you hate to see the seniors like a Haley Bryant leave, but you've also got some really talented and really special freshmen who – the, the moment wasn't too big for them. And now they have that feeling of winning a national championship. And I'll take a page out of Tom Brady's playbook. What's his favorite Super Bowl? The next one. I'm sure that these freshmen feel the same way. So they'll continue that leadership and that expectation, that national championship expectation. They'll continue that next season and moving forward, even when you're losing foundational pieces on this team, like a Haley Bryant or a Kaya Johnson next season. But man, Third national championship for LSU in the last calendar year. Going back to women's basketball, the first ever basketball national championship, men's or women's for LSU last April. Baseball college world series championship in June this past season. And now fast forward to LSU gymnastics first ever national championship. It is a special time. It is a very special time at LSU. I feel like every couple of months I'm talking about a national championship here. I guess because I am. But that's going to do it for me today. Thank you for making Locked in LSU your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Coming up on tomorrow's edition of Locked in LSU, LSU baseball finally gets its first series win in conference play. I want to break it all down because I don't think that we are all of a sudden in the clear and we can all of a sudden throw a parade for this LSU baseball team. The good and the bad wasn't a breakthrough. I want to get into that on tomorrow's edition of Locked on LSU.